give you thanks because you are exalted on high. We worship you for your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And we know you're here present today. And I pray you speak to me as your oracle and minister life and faith to your children. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is faithful. Amen. Isaiah 43, from verse 18 and 19. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. The old, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know it's a scripture that a lot of us know so very much. We're familiar with. It's a scripture that we know, I mean, and can even recite. But today we're going to be looking at, you know, um, focusing on the things that we should remember, you know, and forgetting the things that we should forget and not remember. There's some things in scripture that you hear every time that the Bible talks about you should remember. When you hear words like that, remember. It's very important as believers that you take that seriously and remember. You know, I was doing a study once and I saw the word, remember Lord's wife. Praise God. The Bible says, remember Lord's wife. I don't know if anyone has sat down to really take note and think about Lot's wife. Many people don't, you know, I mean, they never done that research. They've just sat down to think about Because when God says you should remember something, you should, as a matter, you know, of, I mean, compulsion, urgency, necessity, remember that thing. See, the Bible didn't say, Remember Abraham. The Bible didn't say, remember Isaac. It didn't say, remember Jacob. It said, remember Lot's wife. And when we talk about Lot's wife, a lot of people are quick to begin, I mean, to, I mean, judge her character because she became, she was turned into a pillar of salt and you begin to look at her and say, oh, she was this, she was that. You need to read about Lot in the family and read about Lot's wife. And you discover that Lot was a great mother. You know, one of the, the best, the greatest. Lot's wife was the greatest, one of the greatest mothers in scripture. She's one of the best. In a land like Sodom and Gomorrah, she was able to raise virgins. Huh? You know that's not easy. In a land of decadence. In a land, you know, that was corrupt. Bible said our children were virgin. She was, they were willing to give their children instead of the angels. That's to show you how much, how dedicated that woman was. But in the light of the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ was one that said it. Remember Lot's wife. There's some things in scripture that you need to remember. And there's some things that you need to forget. It says remember Lot's wife. When you begin to read about her, you understand that she was not just, it was not because she was not spiritual. It's not, it was not just because she was not disciplined, you know. And those are the things that you begin to look at and know how to handle this world. A lot of us, we say we are believers, but we are still very much attached to the things of the world. I think it's in 1 Corinthians 7, is it 41 or so? The Bible says, and they that use this world, you know, not, as not abusing it. Because the fashion of this world passes away. Is it? 1 Corinthians 7, let me, let, let, let me read a scripture so that 1 Corinthians 7, 
Hallelujah. I think it's 31, sorry. I said 41. 31. It says, and they that use this word. That was where the problem is. It says, and they that use this word. In other words, the scripture wants us to use this word and not this word to use us. A lot of people, this word is using them. They are not the one using this word. It says, and they that use this word, this system of the word, it says, as not abusing it. When you don't know the purpose of a thing, they say abuse is, you know, I mean, is inevitable. It says, and they that use this word as not abusing it, it says, for the fashion of this word, pass it away. And, you know, this is the way I always look at the scripture and I tell myself about the scripture. You know, what I say to myself, when you use this word, hold it very loosely. Huh? So that the rapture of the church, you can let it go. Don't let the word hold you. You hold the word. It says, they that use this word, you see, there, there are loads of people like that, that don't understand how these things work. And that's what I'm taking you to, so that you, you understand the things that you should remember. Lord's wife didn't know how to use this word, so she abused it. She was still attached to the things of this word. The Bible says, love not the word, neither the things that are in the word. It says, it says if any man loves the word, it says the love of the Father is not in him. It says, for all that he is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's all that is in the world. Brothers and sisters, I'm taking you somewhere so that there are some things you should remember. And as we begin to look, you know, at scripture, we would, we would get to that place that we're going to. You know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 43, where we read, it says, remember you not the form of things, and neither consider the things of old. The reason why many of us cannot experience new things in our life is because we have refused to forget the form of things. And we have refused to act into God's word, not to consider, not to look into, observe. Some of us, you know, these are people, some people live, they live their life constantly in the past. Everything they talk about, the punctuations of their life, it's all about what has happened yesterday. And when you meet people like that, if what happened yesterday still controls your life today, there is a problem. As long as you cannot change what happened yesterday, then forget about it. It has happened, it has happened. If you can change it, then I'll say, okay, no, consider it, think about it. When you see a driver that is constantly looking back, you know that person, you know, is an accident about to happen. Because you're not meant to drive looking behind. You see, the, the rear mirror is for, for glance, just for you to glance at. It's not, for, it's not for looking, it's for glancing. Just glance at it and continue driving. But some people constantly, in the Bible is saying, there's some things not to remember. Before we get to the things to remember, there are some things in life that you shouldn't remember. If a new thing must happen in your life, if something new must happen, it says, remember not the things that have happened in the past. Never. Forget them. Hallelujah. Because you know that your past is history. Your today is a gift. That is why it is called present. And your tomorrow is a mystery. Some people, there are some people that don't live in the past, but they live you know, they, they dream, they live in the future. That has not happened. They talk so much about the future as well. It's a problem. You know, I'm not saying don't have visions, don't have dreams. You see, as much as you're talking about your tomorrow, begin to put things in place, bridge in a place that will get you to the tomorrow. Some people just talk big. Oh, I'm going to be, you know, I mean, I know some Christ, Christian sects that talk like that. They talk so big. You know, I'll be the governor of CBN, the president of the country, and, you know. I mean, before you start that, you want to be the president of the country. You need to be a card carrying member of the party. You know, start from there. You know, start, you know, volunteering. Start, you want to be there. It's not just by talking and fighting and praying. It won't happen that way. It's by engaging. But yesterday is history. 
Tomorrow is the one that is a gift. Today is the one that is a gift to you. Tomorrow is, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. You don't even know if you're going to be alive the next minute. So that is not the one you should bother yourself or consider. You know, some people consider. Do you know what it is to consider? It means to give yourself into it, meditate on it. He says there are some things you shouldn't remember in life. And this is it. But as believers, a lot of us, this is how we draw, we remember. He says, remember not ye the former things. Neither consider the things of old. And see, the next verse says, behold, see, I will do a new thing. I don't know why it is, it is uh, what, what has been happening, whether it is with your marriage, whether it is with, with, with your education, with whatever. Forget about what made you fail. Forget about how you got here. Forget about, you see, and one of, that's one of the things. You know, forget about how you, get, you, you got to where you are. You know, begin to think about how you're going to get out of where you are. He says, see, behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And that's what God is about to do. And that's what I, I've come to announce to you, that that's what God wants to do. You know, Paul was in a place that he got to this place and, you know, I mean, he, he, he gave us, I mean, um, uh, a principle that it is worth looking at. In Philippians chapter 3, I think let's read from the storm why Paul was talking, you know, so that you begin to learn how to plan for the future. Live in, the, in today, plan for the future, forget yesterday. You know, so Paul said, from verse 12, let's read. Three from verse 12. It says, Not as though I had already attained, I've arrived. You know, some people get to a place where they think they've arrived, they've attained. Paul is saying, I don't consider myself this way. He says, not as though I had already attained. Either we are already perfect. You know, but I follow after. This is one thing. That I follow after. If that I may, be, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. If I can come to, to, to a place of understanding the reason why God has called me. Why God has arrested me. God arrested me for a reason. I need to get to the place where I come to the understanding, the purpose why God arrested me. You know, I mean, it's all about purpose. You need to get to a place where you understand the purpose why you're alive. Where you understand the purpose why you're here. Nothing happens in life by accident. Everything is by purpose. The Bible says, known unto God are all his works from the foundations of the earth. And so God knows everything. And the problem with a lot of us is we have not come to a place where we come to understand why God has arrested us. The purpose. The reason why we are where we are, why he has apprehended us. He has apprehended us, that's not the problem. But you have to come to a place where you understand why he has, he has arrested you. Why he's called you as a believer. Why you are in a place, why you are in a church like this. Why you are in the business where you are. There is a reason. And it says, the next verse says, Brethren, I count not myself to have arrived. It's the problem of a lot of people that you think you've arrived because of the little job you have now. Oh, they're paying you 8000 a month now. You think you've arrived. You know, I mean, you, you never thought you're going to be here. And so you've gotten there now. You think you've arrived. Paul says, this is the thing that I don't do. I do not count myself to have apprehended, to have arrived. He says, but this is one thing, not two, not three. You can see focus. One thing I do. See, there's things to forget. There are things in life that you need to forget. The reason why your, your marriage is having issues, the reason why your business is having issues is because you have refused to forget the things that you should forget. Some of us dwell on the things that we should forget. That are in the past. They can help you. Just glance and, and move on, move forward. You're driving. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. He says, this is one thing, not two. What is the one thing that you do? If you want to achieve, you want to be successful in life, you want to move forward, you want to have peace and joy, you must do this thing. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. Listen, now, Paul is not talking about 
forgetting the bad things which are behind. He's not talking about forgetting the failures of yesterday. He's not talking about just the bad, everything that is behind. You went to school, you came out with a master's, you came out with a first class. Yes, good, as good as it is. Forget that. Forget the things that are behind. You've done everything. You've gotten to where you are right now. The problem of, of a lot of us is not our failures of yesterday. It's our success of yesterday. When you begin to hear people that talk about, I used to, I used to, I used to, run from them. They don't know where they're going to. Paul says, for me, with everything that he has achieved, he says, one thing that I do, I forget the failures of yesterday, I forget the success of yesterday. Those are the things you forget. Now you have reason, you've gotten to a place that you are a manager. That's not the end. If you rest on your oars, you will discover, you'll be surprised at how much. Especially with this fast-paced, you know, generation. You've gotten that certification and it looks like, yes. Now you've gotten that job, yes. You're waiting. New things are coming. New things in that, that area of your specialization. You know, if you do not engage yourself, you know, if you do not, I mean, move on with the trend as it's going, you will discover just in six months that all you thought was the in thing is become obsolete. Do you know how far, fast paced this, this, this generation is? A long time they tell you it's project management. Before you know what's happening, they tell you it's this other one. Before, there are new things that are coming up. If all that you know, you are enjoying the fact that I've gotten my prince too. I've gotten my, yeah, you sit back. <laughs> you will just discover that you don't know, I mean, by the time you open your eyes, what is happening? What is happening? People have come. So Paul says, listen, I forget the, the success of yesterday. And at the same time, I forget the failures of yesterday. Don't dwell on them. They have come to pass. Don't dwell on them. Forget them. He says, one thing I do, Philippians, go back to Philippians for me. He says, this is one thing that I do. Forgetting the things. Because you need to understand that you must remember some things. I just want to, I'm just putting you through so that you He says, brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this is one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's behind. Husband and wife, you have a misunderstanding. It happened yesterday. You know, learn to forget it. Put it behind you. It's behind. What is behind is behind. If you cannot change it, put it behind. You have a misunderstanding. Some people can still hold on to this kind of misunderstanding. And it will destroy you. See, the things behind, they draw you back. They don't allow you. You cannot look forward and drive fast. I mean, look backward and drive fast. It's not possible. In short, depending on your speed, there's a way you look to the side and look at things happening. If you are on top speed, to even look at the side, you have to be focused. You have to be focused. There's a particular speed you want, you know, in life to reach a destination at a particular time. If that's the speed you're going on, you need to be focused. He says, I forget those things which are behind. And he says, I reach forth unto those things which are before. There are things that are ahead of you. Those are the things that you need to begin to look at and reach out to. You know, I was preaching yesterday somewhere, and I was talking about talking to men. And while I was talking to them, I was talking about, you know, mentality. You know, that's the, the, the topic of the message that I preached, mentality. You know, the M-E-N, men, in capital, mentality. That is the attitude of your mind. As a man, how you see as opposed to what you see. You know, because how you see is more important. You know, and a lot of people, the problem they have in life is what they see. The 10 spies came back and they said, if you read in Numbers 13, you know, and they were talking to Moses, they said, Everything that God says, I, I, I want to read a scripture so that you probably will understand. Just in, diverting a little bit. Numbers 13. And look at what they said. The 
they, they, they didn't doubt what God said, verse 27 says, and they told him and said, they were telling Moses, they were bringing the report of what they saw, of what it was. That's mentality. Because it's how you see that stops you, not what you see. It's how you see that limits you, it's not what you see. How you see is so important in life to your progress. How you see. David saw Goliath. And he saw a man that he could kill because he had covenant with God. And he kept saying it. They didn't understand what he was seeing. He wasn't seeing Goliath. He was seeing covenant. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He kept using the word uncircumcised Philistine. Uncircum the people didn't get it. What he was saying in essence is that I am going to defeat this man because I'm in covenant. And he's going to lose because he's not in covenant. So I mean, Saul so saw a giant that has been a champion from his youth. And everything that comes against you, you know, all the challenges that you face, they are always bigger than you. There's no challenge that you, 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 you come to that is smaller than you. He's always a giant bigger than you. And you begin to think anything that comes to you, if, I mean, is to buy the skin of one pound, even if I don't have one pound now, it's not a challenge. Because I know I don't have one pound. It's not a challenge. It's not I can even get it easily from anybody. It's not a challenge. But when there is a task of about 100,000, if you don't have it, you know, for Bill Gates and the rest of them, a tax of 100,000, it's not a challenge. Of 1 million, 10 million, it's not a challenge. And so when it comes to you and it looks bigger than you, there is a reason why God has allowed it come to you. It's because you are able to, because of covenant, overcome it. So these people, if you read about them, verse 27 says, and they said unto him, and said, everything God said, he says, we came unto the land without thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. This is the evidence of it. This is the fruit of it. There is evidence to show that everything God said. But nevertheless, how they saw. It says, nevertheless, and look at the things they saw. The people be strong. Three things that they saw. The people be strong that dwell in the land. One, the strength of the people. That's what they have to contend with and they are afraid. Secondly, the cities are walled and very great. They saw Jericho. So when they saw that big death city, you know, and three, moreover, we saw the children of Anak, giants in the land, three things. They are strong. We are not as strong as they are. You know, but can I quickly steal them and said, no, 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 no. Let us go up at once because God delights in us. We can do. We don't know what it is when God, when we say God is with a man. Bible says God was with David and he went forward and he, 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 he grew great because the Lord of Ost was with him. God says God was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. When God is with you, it doesn't matter what happens around you. He says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people. You must get to a place where you understand how you see, how you see. Don't just see with this your optical eyes. And so we're talking about Paul. He says, Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things that are before, that are in front. Do you have what you're reaching out to? Do you have what you're going for? What you're moving ahead to want to reach? And it didn't stop there. He says, verse 14 says, now this is it. He says, I press toward the mark for the price of the eye calling. And that word press shows you something. That word press shows you that there's an obstacle. You see, you will not press if there's nothing resisting you. Is that not so? The reason why you press is because there's a resistance. There's something stopping you from reaching that dream, that vision, that thing that you have ahead of you. There is something that is saying you will not get to it. And it's stopping you. And Paul says, I'm not just going to talk and laugh or pray. He says, I'm going to press toward it. That thing that is an obstacle, that's what I'm pressing toward. I press toward the mark for the prize of the eye calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
A lot of us don't press. We give in too easily. Too easily. And so for you to reach that place, there are things you need to forget, like I said. Your success of yesterday, your failures of yesterday. For you, I mean, to, to, to get to that place that God wants you to get to, there has to be a fight. There has to be, I mean, a moving forward. Praise the Lord. And so that's exactly just, by the way, praise the Lord. You know, everything that happens to you, there's a reason for it. And like I said, when things happen to you, God does not use things to teach you lessons. And listen at, you know, it's because God has taught you a lesson that things happen. Then I give you an example that in school, you know, they will give you, um, they will teach you a particular, maybe algebra. They teach you algebra, and after give, teaching you algebra, they give you a test to know if you now know algebra. You know, and if you know algebra, then you pass it. If you don't know it, you'll fail it. Aha. So that's what happened. So that, the test did not come to teach you a lesson. Hmm? The test came to know if you have learned the lesson. And now, but the truth is, even after the test, you should still learn a lesson. That if you're not prepared, you will fail. There's a lesson to learn. In life, if you're not prepared for life, you will fail. Someone said, you see, if you have, I mean, an A in education, in your career, you know, and you have an F in life, you have failed. Huh? And so, as you're getting an A in your education, huh? make sure you get an A also in life. That's the reason why you see a man with billions, then something little happened. And because he cannot see the way out of it, he goes to commit suicide. You know, he's had an A in education, in, 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 in the world definition of success, but he does not have an A in the things of God in life. Because what keeps you going is that resilient from the Spirit. Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8, he says, we are troubled on every side, and trouble is going to come to every one of us. He says, but we are not in distress. He says, we are powerless, but we are not in despair. He says, we are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. He says, we are knocked down, but not knocked out. Cast down, but not cast down. You see, it's not a man that is knocked down that loses the battle. It's a man that stays down that loses in, in boxing. So you are knocked down, cast down, but you're not destroyed. You're not knocked down. So challenges of life would come. You have to be able to stand up to it and face it as it comes. You have to be able to stand up and face it. Things are going to come. You know? I mean, to put you at one level, because you're falling does not mean that's the end of your life. It's just the beginning of what God wants to do. In short, God specializes in using people like that that are falling. People that have seen their inadequacies and that are beginning to learn how to depend on God. Those are the kind of people that he wants to work with. Hallelujah. So you must learn that last our life is. In life, you cannot change the past. You can only determine the future. So you need to begin to sow seeds today that determines the kind of future that you want. You can't go forward by looking behind. You can't go forward by looking behind, brothers and sisters. And so we want to just look at some, some scriptures, you know, and how, how I would say, how do you remember, you know, or how do you forget God? Because we talk about remembering God. Let's, let's major on forgetting God. How do you forget God? Deuteronomy um, 8 verse 11 says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. In other words, it's easy to forget God. You know, we remember God when we have challenges. We forget God when things are good. It's, I mean, that's how it is. The ten lepers will tell you, the minute they got their healing, they forgot God. But was only one that remembered. And he came back. And the me, it says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. How do you forget God? In not keeping his commandments. Did you see how you forget God? And his judgments and his statute, which I command. You see, when you forget the word of God, you get to a place now, things are good. When the word of God says, don't do this, the word of God says to you, forgive. And you say, no, 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 I can't forgive. I can't, you don't know what that person has done for me. You are forgetting God. When the word of God says, give, and you refuse to do it, you're forgetting God. When the word of God says, help, 
and you choose not to, you're forgetting God. In other words, whatever the word of God says that you go contrary of, you're forgetting God. You treat your wife badly, you're forgetting God. You treat your husband badly, you're forgetting God. But the Bible says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandment. So it is important to understand that when you do not keep God's word, you do not do God's word. You're forgetting God. And now we we'll begin to look at the things that you, you, you need to remember. The things that you need to remember, there are things that we forget, you know. But before we talk about the things we remember, you know, at times, I was saying something when we read the book of Hebrews 2 from his 1. If I read again, if we are able to read again, you see, you know, there's something about neglect. Hebrews 2 from his 1 to 3 says, Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Give earnest heed. To consider these things that God, that, you know, all the things that God, make sure, let them be before, before you. It's out of neglect that we lose the things that are important, not because we reject them. It's out of neglect. He said, therefore, we ought to give more earnest aid to the things, you know, give a lot of consideration to the things which we have heard, lest at any time they should sleep. He says, verse 2 says, it says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3 says, how shall we escape? If we neglect. It didn't say if we reject. A lot of us are born again in this place and we will never reject salvation. But we can neglect it. If you neglect it. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen, you've seen a beautiful house. I mean, I used to know one house. Beautiful, those days. Big. With swimming pool with a lot of people in the house, massive house. But when the owner died, and there were legal issues, and they left the house, you know, for years, before you knew what was happening, the house began to fall apart. And I'm like, you know, you would think that because they're not using it, you know, it should stay intact. No. Neglect like that. You buy a car and leave it. Two, three years not using it. You begin to see that things begin to fall apart. One screw, one, and without use. And the reason why a lot of people... They, they lose things is because they neglect it, not because they reject it. You know, and so it is important for us to begin to see the things to remember and not to forget. You know, God told them, he says, behold, I do a new thing. The reason why you don't see new things is because you have refused to forget some things. Or you always remember, let's not even use the word, because I'm interchanging the word forget and remember. Some of us, we always remember the things we shouldn't remember that are in the past. And there's no way you can ever get something new happen in your life if that is how you live your life. And I'm instructing you today, by God's word, learn to forget the things that you should forget. And always remember the things that you should remember, those little things that... People do, you know, you see in the home. Oh, your wife does this well, your husband does this well, you know. A lot of us don't remember those things that they do well. It's the things that they didn't do well. I mean, go to them and say, oh, whatever it is you call your wife or your husband, oh, thank you. Thank you for this. Oh, you've done this well. Thank you. We don't remember those things. It's what they don't do well. Ah, oh, we talk about. No. Learn to know the things to forget and the things you remember. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to look at the things that you should remember, you know. And one of the first things we have read, in Deuteronomy 8, verse 11. You know, I said we're using the, we are using the word, you know, forget and remember. So it says, beware that thou remember the Lord thy God. In, in keeping his commandment. So because that's what they're saying in essence. Remember the Lord your God and keep, keep God's word. Let the word of God be precious to you. Remember the word of God to keep it precious. As precious as it is. That's where, you see, the will of God is in the word of God. And it's in the, will, in, 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 in the word of God to get solution to everything. Remember, remember always to keep his word. Not to read it, not to hear it. There's a difference between listening to God's word 
and hearing God's word. Bible says, let him that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You see, in listening, you're just gathering information through your ear. In hearing, you hear with your spirit. It says, once has he spoken, twice have I heard. So you hear with your outer ear, and you hear with your spirit. So you must remember God's word. In Deuteronomy 4, verse 23, it talks about, if you can put it up for us, Deuteronomy 4, verse 23. It says, take it unto yourself, lest you forget. In other words, remember, like I said, it says, take it unto yourself, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image. Oh, no. It says, take it unto yourself, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God for, had forbidden thee. Now, what it's saying is, remember, take it to yourself, and, rem and remember the covenant of the Lord. That's what it's saying in essence. You know, if we interchange the word forget, not, and remember. It says, remember. Now, we're not talking about just the word covenant of the, of, of the law. I mean, I was listening in Sunday school today. Someone was talking about how that she decided that, you know, she's not going to work on a Sunday. You know, I mean, listen, it's covenant, personal covenant. There's some things that are covenanted with God. Huh? And you know what, what I've discovered? Anything that you covenant, you know, you enter a covenant with God for. It might not look as if it's working. It's over time, you would understand. God will test you and try you with everything to see if you keep the covenant. If you keep your own part of the covenant, you'll be surprised. But brothers and sisters, we have a covenant as new creation. And we talk about, when we talk about the New Testament, we're talking about the new covenant. It says, a new covenant have I given unto you, or a new commandment have I given unto you, that ye love one another. You know, there's a covenant of love that is meant to exist amongst us. And understand it, no matter what it is, whether it is in your marriage, in the church, there's a covenant of love. Don't let anything break it. You see, you must remember that covenant. Don't make anything else like unto it. Let it be exact covenant that God has given to you. Don't break the word of God. Don't break the covenant. These days that they don't talk about sin and the rest of them, listen, you ought to be careful. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, it says that you cleanse yourself from the feudiness of the flesh and the feudiness of the spirit. There is the sin of the flesh and the sin of the spirit. And someone asked me a question. They asked the question and I was trying to answer it. He says, why is it that it's only, I mean, the sins that we can see, like fornication and adultery that we judge in the church. You know, those days they tell you to sit behind. Those are the sins that they judge. Why is it only that? You know, if there are these sins, because Bible says, having therefore these promises. Bible says in verse 6, says, come out from amongst them and be separate. He says, now, if God has told you, come out from amongst them and be separate, and I will be your God, and I will do this, and I will do that. You know, verse 7, 7 verse 1, go back to 1. He says, now, chapter 7 verse 1. He says, now, having these promises, he says, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So in other words, there are filthiness of the flesh and there are filthiness of the spirit. There are things that dirty your spirit and there are things that dirty your flesh. Now, the ones that we can see, so I answered them and said, listen, as a pastor, the one I can see is the filthiness of the flesh. And so, I mean, I will correct you accordingly when I see that. Because the filthiness of the spirit, you don't see them, but they are most dangerous. Not like I'm classifying sin and saying one sin is worse than the other. The filthiness of the spirit is worse. God judges that one himself. The one of the flesh, you know, I mean, if you see someone commit adultery or fornication, we can call you to order. For someone that is a liar and you don't catch, someone that is jealous, that is envious, that is covetous, you don't see these things. God judged those ones himself. So you must take a responsibility to cleanse yourself from these things. Since that's the way to perfect holiness in the fear of God. That is the way you have to cleanse yourself on a daily basis. The Bible says, sanctify them through by thy word, thy, thy, thy truth, thy, thy word is truth. John 17, 17. It's in the word that you have the truth that cleanses, that sanctifies. So you must remember the covenant of God, you know? And not only that, it says, the Bible talks about in Psalm 103, 
If you're going to look back at all, these are the things that you look back to remember. Verse 2. Psalm 103, verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In other words, bless the Lord, O my soul, and remember all his benefits. You're here today, where you are. Probably you've gotten your papers, uh, you've gotten a good job, you're married, you have children. You know, a lot of us think that these things just happen. You know, I mean, of course, it just happened. You know, trust me, these things just don't happen. They just don't happen. Just be thanking God. You know, some of us go through surgeries, you know, and the whole thing, you know, came out well, and you're uh, excited. There are people that are richer than you, better, better in the sense of, I mean, having everything than, than you have, and they have gone through surgery. I saw a billionaire one that went to do, is it Tommy Talk in Nigeria, and died on the table, you know. And, I mean, I'm just saying that as in, you know. I mean, things happen. It's a benefit that you're alive today. Yeah? Don't forget that. It's a benefit from God that you can eat and you can drink. It's a benefit. That you can walk or you walk yourself down this way is the benefit from God. That you can go to the toilet. You can talk. It's a benefit. The Bible says, remember these benefits. Don't forget them. A lot of us forget them. You know, that you are even breathing in and breathing out. How many of you have even remembered to thank God that, ah, I can breathe in and breathe out? You know, it looks like because my you know, the doctors know more, the lungs is perfect, the whatever is pumping the blood, and so uh, the people that die, look at them. The heart is there. The lung is still there. Everything is there, you know? So it's not about that. It's just because of his benefits. Don't forget that. These are the things that you should remember. These are the things that you should think about. And, and he talked about in Deuteronomy 8, 18. He says, Deuteronomy 8, 18, quickly because of our time, I just want to just rush through. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wet, that he may establish his covenant, which is well unto thy father as it is this day. You know, I'm this it. You have a job. You know, you know, a lot of us complain about the things we don't have. In short, complain about even the things we have. Like you see someone complain about my child. Eh? My child is always running around. My child is always doing this. My child, ah, thank God your child can run around. At least you have prayed and God has given you a child. You know? Now, if my child is stubborn, at least remove stubborn, you have a child. Huh? Remove anything, you have a child. My job is a difficult one. Remove difficult, you have a job. Is that not so? Uh, someone is looking for a job. Let it, let it be difficult. I don't know if you get that. Some of us don't know how to thank God. We complain about the things. We are like the Israelites. Just this manna. This manna. This manna. At least they have food to eat. Some people don't have food. We are complaining about the ones that God gave them. Gave them. You are complaining about your husband. My husband is this. My wife is this. You have a husband. You have a wife. Why not thank God? Learn to. He says, thou shalt remember the Lord. The power to get wealth. Where you are, financially or whatever, what you have. Remember that God is the one that gives the power. If he withdraws that power, you put all of your efforts and you discover that you get nothing. And lastly, because of our time, Ecclesiastes, this is the one that is most important. 12 verse 1. It says, remember now. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. It says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. We're still all very young because there's an evil day coming. It says, why the evil days come not? Nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So there's time coming. And when you read, we don't have the time to read all these things. It says, when should you remember? Who should you remember? Your creator. When should you remember him? Now. Not later, now. 
when you can still do the things you want to do. You know, when everything is going on, you can walk by yourself. You can come to church on your own. You'll get to a time when you'll be looking for somebody that will bring you. If your children say they are not going, it will become, become difficult. You know? I mean, depending on how old you get. When the evil days come, when you're not able to, this is the time to pray. This is the time to study. This is the time to fellowship with the brethren. Not tomorrow, now. That's the time to remember. These are the things to remember. And these are the things, like Paul said, you press forward towards. Make sure you, there's a press in your life to always thank God for his benefits. Make sure there is always a press to remember your creator now. Some of us have probably said when we're uh, 30, ah, don't worry, next year I will study more, I will pray more. It's now five years. It's now six years after. It's now seven years after. Some of us have said things. Oh, I mean, you see, I'm going to serve God. Just give me two years to just get this career out of, uh, um, you know, I mean, sorted. Now it's 10 years after the career. You have not found yourself serving God. And some people, you know, some people complain. I said, ah, people don't allow me to do things. You know, it, it's because uh, of this. They have reasons why it's not possible. Listen, in serving God, it's never, going to, it's never going to be convenient. You're not just going to come to a place. For instance, you come to a church and you get to the church and you see that there are vacancies. Okay, you can just become the assistant pastor. Or you become, no, no, it's not going to ever happen like that. You see, as you begin to walk gradually, I remember how it all began for me when I started in Redeem. You know, I mean, going to church and the pastor found me early and pushed me and pulled me up and said, okay, join us, join the ministers. You know, but I wasn't even looking for anything. I joined the Sunday school. I became so committed in just doing the work that I loved what I was doing. It was not about, there was no ambition. There was no, no, I had my plans and desires and the things I wanted to do. And I didn't even know anybody was looking at me. From there, they made me welfare leader. I did welfare like nobody else has ever done welfare. My pastor would only still talk about that till today. I did welfare differently. I didn't say, no, 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 I'm a person of the world. I don't do welfare. Um, this, you see, you know, responsibility is, you know, the, the reward for responsibility or faithfulness is more responsibility. Bible says to him that asks, more will be given. The one that has not, you sit down there and you don't get yourself engaged in the things of God. People will come behind you and they'll take the place. You see, get involved, engage in one thing or the other. You might, no matter how small, you might be cleaning. That is where, you know, your profiting will appear. That's where you'll be recognized, not just by sitting down and waiting for someone to recognize you. No one is going to recognize you. Bible says, it's the gift of a man that makes way for him. No one is ever going to recognize you. It's your gift that they will recognize. You know, the coming of the Lord is near. And that's why I started with, remember Lord's wife. Don't become complacent. Don't get to the place where the things of the spirit, and especially with this uh, coronavirus, that a lot of people are now so used to worshiping God at home. You know? I mean, there's some people that will say, no, 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 no matter what, we want to be in God's house. David said, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's something about coming into God's house. Yes, we're going to follow the regulations, all that has been said, but listen, let it be, it be a desire for the things of God, for the house of God. Let the zeal of the house of the Lord consume you. You know, I should bow down your head right now and begin to talk to God. Talk to Him. You know, know the things to remember. Know the things to forget. Don't forget the things that you should remember. And remember the things that you should forget. That's the problem of a lot of people. You remember the things you should forget. But you forget the things that you should remember. There is no way God can do a new thing. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. But first, forget the former things. Consider not the things of old. If you can do those two things, then God will do a new thing. If you have not done those two things, God cannot do a new thing. It doesn't matter where it is that you are today. Talk to me.
when I give God my life, He will take care of me. He would never, never let me down. I will give God my life. I should remember. Because that's just the prayer for today. And I think it's a prayer that you should pray from the depth of the spirit. If you can forget the things that you should forget, unforgiveness will have a place in you. Help me forget the things that I should forget. Quiet and just talk to him. 